Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, February the 3rd. Our special guest today is Deneen Mashinsky, and her topic is a new spin on PD. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peg, who will introduce Deneen and ask her the newbie question. <coughs> Well, thank you. Uh, today we have a very special presenter. Denise Lashinsky is in her 22nd year in education, and as a certified reading specialist and a veteran teacher, Denise owns and operates an early intervention agency called Connective Intervention Services, where she supervises and designs professional development for 30 staff members. In addition, Denise's experience as an educator includes teaching preschool, first, second, and third grades as well as serving as a literacy and technology coach for grades 6 through 8. Currently, Deneen is the instructional specialist at West Coville Elementary School in East Penn School District in Pennsylvania, home of the Philadelphia Eagles, by the way. In this role, she provides instructional coaching and also serves as a school-based MTSS coordinator. Deneen works collaboratively with district-level administration to plan systematic professional development experiences. Additionally, she has presented at several local and state conferences spanning her career. So it's with great pride and pleasure that I turn over the show to my friend and dear colleague, Deneen Lashinsky. Deneen, we will start with the newbie question. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome from Pennsylvania over here, we, where, as Peg explained, we're rooting for our Eagles to win tomorrow. And thank you to Peg Bolak for the warm welcome and for introducing me to Classroom 2.0 Live. Um, the newbie question is, why is it important to think of PD from the perspective of one size doesn't fit all? And um, my answer is really that we, should, we shouldn't think of it as one size fits all for so many different reasons. The first and most important is because we know that best learning takes place if we use differentiation. So this holds true in our classrooms as well as, um, you know, for our students, as well as colleagues during professional development. So we really should be teaching the way we want to be taught. Professional development of the past that I remember consisted of all-day workshops on topics that were really not of interest um, necessarily to me. And oftentimes, I would already know about 80% of what was being presented. Although, I still felt really appreciative to learn that 20% but I also wanted more out of my professional development. So my goal today is to really introduce you to some alternative models to traditional professional development, which will allow for the professional development to be more meaningful, relevant, and personalized for our teachers. So in order to begin, I'd like to start with a Padlet. So I'm going to give us a little bit of time. I'm going to screen share here. And the question that I'd like you to respond to using the Padlet, and the way we respond on a Padlet is to double click anywhere, and you'll see a sticky note. And then you can just type in your response right there. So I want you to think about the best PD you've ever attended. And think about what made it the best. So if you could just take a little bit of time right now and go ahead and, and type a response. And if for some reason you're having difficulty with the Padlet, you can certainly respond right in the chat bar as well. So really think about what, what made the professional development the best for you. Thank you. 
Thank you for starting to respond. I started to see some some responses here. So I see Twitter chats, lots of opportunities to interact. So I'm seeing to turnkey things, to be able to learn strategies and be able to implement them. I love the idea of the Twitter chats. I love those hashtags as well, EdChat, MedTech. It, it allows you to have that professional development on the, on the spot as you need it. And I see EdCamp here, lots of choices, hands-on activities. Oh, great. So I see a lot of um, experience with some EdCamp, which is fabulous. We'll talk about a spin-off of that today. And Pete and C. It is my dream to get there someday. Choice and natural conversation. Love that. Give it another few seconds for everyone to respond. Okay, take a look across our Padlet here and what do you see in common? What types of words stand out? And you can actually respond in our chat. So what do you see? I'm going to have you take a look at it across the Padlet. What's the common theme that you see? What made it the best for everyone? And I'm going to flip back to our slides. And if you would just go ahead and I see choice, that's great. Choice and ready to use PD. I love it. Relevant and engaging. Great. Lots of active participation. Super. Choice for sure. Love it. I love that. And web tools as well. So incorporating technology. Super. So again, today our topic is a new spin on TV on PD. And I have highlighted a couple of different models, Learning Lounge and Power Hour and Breakfast. Uh, also, we have some differentiated professional development for parents we'll talk about today and what you know an ed camp style might look like from a district perspective. So again, follow me on Twitter, and I like the hashtag visit, learn, take away, because with this new spin on, on PD, that is really what we're hoping that our participants are able to do, is visit, learn, and take away strategies. So this chart right here, what does the research say about professional development? And this chart is really explaining the lack of effectiveness for that old-fashioned sit-and-get PD model, where we're just sitting there listening to someone speak, sort of a death by PowerPoint, if you will. And uh, teachers transfer 0% of what they learn into practice when we're just discussing theory. As we increase that relevance and personalize the professional development through coaching, we can see a 95% transfer into the classroom instruction. So based on your survey and um, that about 52% of you are classroom teachers, you really are in a position where you can coach your colleagues as well. So even by having those conversations with your colleagues, 
going to visit them, peer visitations, and things like that. You have those coaching opportunities, too. And here's a nice little visual that I, I like to, uh, to show, showing the faces of professional development. So oftentimes we feel like we're right there where that little star is, and we need to get through all of the different mazes in order to get where you want to be. And this is why I noticed a lot of people posted about Twitter being a great professional development because it allows us the opportunity to get exactly what you need when you need it. It's right there for you. So required professional development does have its place, but it's not necessarily tailored to the individual teacher. Sometimes teachers need that help right now with a project or strategy happening today. So the professional development that happened five months ago gave them inspiration, but now they need help when a problem comes about or they simply want more information to help them right there in the classroom. So where do they turn? The models presented today will allow for sustainability with new initiatives and um, to help with instructional practices and implementing these right there in the classroom. So the first model I'd like to talk about today is what we call the learning lounge. So we usually host this around the holiday season and we'll call it lights in the learning lounge as you can see from, from the picture. We have lights, we have uh, a fire going using a Yule log right there in the, in the front. Um, I actually did this, I've done this for about 10 years at East Penn, and when I started a model of this, the Learning Lounge, I started it uh, when I taught 6th, 7th, and 8th grade as a literacy coach, and we called it Cookies, Cocoa, and Cool Stuff. And we incorporated technology strategies as well as other reading strategies for all content area teachers. And the Learning Lounge is really about setting up a relaxed environment for teachers to come and visit and hopefully learn and take away things right, you know, that day. And yes, food is always important. And if you bake it, they will come. So, or make it, they will come. So it is a motivator to definitely bake and we provide cookies with our learning lounge and again we do it around the holiday season so we try to make it enticing that way. We have focused around the big five literacy strategies so we set up tables where we had one table that really focused on phonemic awareness developmental phase. We had another focusing in on phonics, another table fluency, another table comprehension, and then another um, focusing around vocabulary. So there are many different ways that you can run this in different topics. Last year our focus was on word study and we as a district provided professional development on the importance of word study and implementing it about two years ago as a district and then we wanted to give teachers something that they could use and take away, um, so we set up the word study tables. And we set them all up by developmental levels. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with Words Their Way, but each of the books and developmental levels, um, they're broken down, such as um, derivational and so forth. So we set up each table using resources from those books that perhaps, you know, teachers read through the books, but they may not have noticed every resource that was available um, to them. So we tried to make that right there. Oh, and Paula Failinger says some teachers do visit twice because they, they like the treats and hopefully they like the strategies as well. So um, it is definitely fun. Let's talk a little bit more about this. Who creates the structure for the learning lounge? So it could be an instructional coach, it could be an instructional leader, um, a reading specialist, principals, curriculum supervisors, grade level leaders, like I said, even 
you know, teachers in the classroom, if you all decided to get together and have a learning lounge, you could set up the faculty lounge that way. So it could be really fun. Uh, when does the learning lounge occur? So we have done this, you know, after school. Some schools did it during their faculty meeting hour. Some um, have chosen to do it during their, their PD district days. Uh, before and after school, or visits during lunch, or during their specialist time. We typically at West Coastville run it from about 8.30 in the morning until 2.30, so that we're doing it over, over lunch, so people can come in to get some treats, or first thing in the morning as well. So where might the learning lounge take place, like a space? In our building, we actually share specialists across the district. So certain days in the day cycle we have available. For instance, at day three, our library is open. So that's a perfect space to, to set up the learning lounge. Right now we have an empty classroom. We're very fortunate. That will not be the case next year. But that's another you know, great opportunity to set up the space. So I like to think of the Learning Lounge as truly an event, an event that we're planning for. So we talk about the pre-event planning, the actual experience, and then sort of the after party, if you will. So before we start, we decide as a team, and right now I'm working, my team is really um, other teachers like me, there's one in each of our buildings in East Penn, so we work together as a team, and we use district initiatives to help us and guide us, but we also value the teacher's opinion. So we'll survey our guests or survey our teachers and see what is it exactly that they might want to know a little bit more about. This is an example of a survey. So, like I explained, they could type in their name, they don't have to, and we used Google Form for this, and they could check off their building, and then we drilled down to what is the focus, beyond math, word study, units of study, which is another initiative for us right now, FAST, which is also an initiative, um, guided reading, or something else. What are you specifically looking for in that area that you've selected? And that helps us drill down a little bit more because if they're just checking off word study, maybe they're looking for games to use during a daily five or something like that. We want to know specifically what they're looking for so that we can develop activities to put out at the stations. So next, we send out invitations, and we have set this up where we send out paper invitations, sort of like you see right there. We did a learning lounge about questioning one year, and that was a district initiative. And thank you to Erin Murphy. She's actually logged in. She actually created this, this particular invitation here, so um, she did a great job at that one. She made her. And we also send out um, using an Animoto. So that's another great way to invite teachers to come. Oh, that's fabulous. And then the experience. The experience allows for um, resources, and as you can see from the different stations, from the pictures that we've set up, we actually have uh, technology sprinkled throughout. So we find that's really important to show how technology really can be incorporated into everyday lessons and strategies, and that it's not something completely separate. And a great question, what is FAST? I'll actually be talking about that in just a little bit. But it's formative assessment screening tool, and it's what we use as our universal screener and what we use to progress monitor students in both reading and math right now. 
so the experience. Also, when the participants walk in, there's a welcome table. We have purchased poinsettias as we, we raffle them off. We've actually raffled off Wawa gift cards. Wawa is a big thing out here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Maybe sheets, I'm not sure, you know, in other places. But um, that's always a motivator as well. So we ask teachers to fill out an exit ticket, and then we use that as a raffle uh, to raffle off different prizes as well, which is also a motivator for them to come and join in. So that's always nice. I'm very fortunate because I work with a principal, um, Tara Desiderio, who encourages and promotes the event. And she's really helped me set, set it up. And she makes an announcement first thing in the morning, inviting all the teachers to stop by. And she also helps to facilitate the learning lounge with me. So she'll set up camp and, and hang out for the day. And it's, you know, really helpful to have an administrator that is backing the process. It's wonderful. She's created a culture in our school in which teachers really do feel comfortable stopping in without feeling obligated to do so as well. So that's really nice where teachers just pop in throughout the day and it's very relaxed. So the tables are set up, like I said, and, and technology is sprinkled throughout. Um, and thank you for sharing the links. I do have examples of what we send out electronically, which I sort of separated into screenshots here so you could see what it looks like. But we always start with an essential question. This one in particular was talking about word study and how to increase you know, reading and writing achievement through word study. Our district focused a lot on using I can statements. So we wanted to model that and also encourage teachers by modeling using the I can statements. Of course, I love the first one. I can eat some holiday cookies and listen to music and mingle with my friends. That um, my favorite I can. <laughs> and then the experience, again, talking about that, that opening table where they can pick up an exit ticket, and um, and then each table we had set up uh, using words their way, the different developmental levels and some activities. And these are all hyperlinks that go with that table. So emergent, a lot of our kindergarten teachers and first grade teachers were, were hanging out at the emergent table. And then letter name was at table two. Word within, word pattern was table three. And again, all of those, all of those are hyperlinked with activities. And we had samples out on each table as well. Table four was syllables and affixes, and table five was derivational. So this is more for our upper grade teachers. So we always want to make sure we have something for everyone and that everyone is able to walk away with a strategy to turnkey right away. And last is the after party, or what we like to call reflection. And one year we decided to do our exit ticker ticket as a picture out the door. So instead of just having our teachers write down what they learned, they wrote down with their team using a big thought bubble or individually something that they are you know, going to try to turn key and take away and utilize. And then again, we follow up the after party with reflection and a survey because we always want to see where do we need to go from here. This helps us plan our next steps in order to sustain the learning through our, you know, faculty meetings or what we'll, we now call Empower Hour, which I'll explain in a few minutes. So this is an example of the survey we send out for the after party, after the learning lounge. And again, it helps to guide our next steps. 
So what do participants think about the Learning Lounge? And this is actually a hyperlink to a video that we can hopefully share with you now. The Learning Lounge is a great opportunity um, for teachers to learn lots, lots of new techniques and strategies that they can use in their classroom. I teach fourth grade, and one of the strategies that I took away is called Real World Squares. Um, it is a problem solving activity that you can do with your students. You make groups of four, and they each have different roles, and all of the roles work together to solve a problem. So there's the information gatherer, there's the plan director, the illustrator, and the summarizer. And it's cool because you can group the kids and you can use some of their strengths and give them roles that match their strengths and they all work together and they solve what could be a really challenging problem, but they do it as a team. So it makes them really successful. My Lights and Learning Lab has been useful to me. It's an opportunity for me to come to the library in our school and in a very non-threatening, comfortable way. Um, kind of peruse uh, what great things are being done by colleagues that I respect and admire. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm able to go to them for help when I want to actually implement the lessons in my classroom. It's been great. Learning lounges have been extremely beneficial to me as a technology integration specialist because they have given me the opportunity to work with teachers during the learning lounge to provide instructional ideas that are aligned to the theme of the learning lounge. Then, as a follow-up, teachers invite me into their room based on the connections that we made during the learning lounge. I'm able to help teachers integrate those tools and then follow up with them to see how they're using the tools or the instructional strategies in their classroom. That also provides me an avenue to then add additional strategies and additional tools into the teacher's classroom. The ultimate goal there, too, is to not use technology as a band-aid, but really take the technology to the curriculum core, or our instructional core. As the administrator of West Coast Bell Elementary School, a K-5 building, knowing supports are in place to guide our teachers to implement the strategies presented at Lights in the Learning Lounge is extremely comforting. Teachers are utilizing our instructional support teacher as a resource and we see an increased use of higher level questioning and the use of the Q matrix readily in the classrooms. When in the classrooms, many higher level instructional practices have been observed and our team loves Lights in the Learning Lounge and looks forward to it each and every year. So actually this year we are trying something new and I'm doing our Learning Lounge in February rather than doing it in December and we're calling it Love Learning in the Lounge. So it's coming up in just a few weeks and we're doing a Valentine's Day theme and hopefully we will have a chocolate fountain to entice and motivate teachers to stop in hopefully several times a day and learn more about strategies to use and implement within guided reading and during math differentiation. So I'm excited for our upcoming love in the learning lounge. So you can certainly play on words and make it your own, but I think the key in creating a learning lounge is to make it more of a relaxed environment. Like I was saying, we set up a Yule log on our screen to make it more inviting and welcome. We tone down the lights, we use the white lights, and um, I actually put a little space heater right in here underneath the fire. So you really feel like you can go warm up by the fire and then go explore the strategies and have some treats along the way. Moving on, we're going to talk about what is an Empower Hour. So in order to do that, and I noticed that some people do already have background knowledge in EdCamp, this is a very short video explaining what an EdCamp is because really Empower Hour is modeled after the EdCamp style PD. So we'll just take a minute to watch this now. Have you ever been to an EdCamp before? If not, this video is for you. EdCamp is an innovative model for professional learning. It is completely driven by participants and is structured to engage educators in areas which they wish to gain and contribute knowledge. A typical day at EdCamp looks like this. 1. Come in, go to the registration table, and claim your name tag. You may then sit down at any table you'd like. 2. 
On each table, there will be a pile of sticky notes and pens. These are for you to write down your name and a topic you'd like to discuss with others. After you've written down your name and topic, you will take it to the big whiteboard in the room and just stick it up there. If you do it, others will follow. Three, there will be someone at the whiteboard organizing session suggestions into common themes and taking note of the most popular topics. These are the sessions that will likely take place that day. There will be four sessions, so please write and post more than one topic for discussion. Now you're probably thinking, as soon as I post my sticky note, I'll probably have to facilitate. Don't be shy, fellow educators. You can do it, and here's how. I almost forgot to mention, EdCamp is an unconference model. Sessions are discussion-based. You will not see someone standing at the front of the room presenting a topic using a PowerPoint. Facilitating does not mean presenting. You are simply the leader in discussion. Leader, you ask? Why, yes. You will simply introduce yourself to the group, name, job, position, what you want to learn, and then pass it around the circle. After introductions are completed, it will be time for you to ask discussion questions to spark the conversation. For example, Hi everyone, my name's John, and welcome to the session discussing how to integrate the Hunger Games and other pop fiction novels into a grade 8 humanities class. I have a group of kids in the class that haven't stopped talking about it for the past month. Any ideas? Well, John, I recently used the Hunger Games as a writing prompt where the kids wrote as if, and so on. Everyone would join in and discuss ways to integrate pop fiction into the curriculum. Simple, right? That's why we are encouraging you to facilitate. The power of an EdCamp resides in its participants. You do not need to be an expert to share your knowledge and experiences. Just an educator eager to learn with other colleagues. So make connections, engage, and share. Thanks for watching. Animator is Suhoon Lee. Voiceover is Kirby Faco. Cameraman is Ken Heidebrecht. Visit our website, lethcamp.ca, and follow us on Twitter, at lethcamp. Okay, hopefully you were able to watch the video. If not, we'll have the link so that you can take a look at it. It's just explaining the setup. And, um, and yes, we have Ed Camp Lehigh Valley coming up May 5th, so I have to put a plug in for that. You can see that in the chat. We're very excited about that coming up. So in Power Hour, our principal, Tara Desiderio started this about three years ago, and really it came out of an idea she gathered using Twitter. And really we have gone through doing this now, um, like I said, for a few years, and it really is allowing our teachers to empower and share tools and different strategies that they're using in the classroom. And it's much more worthwhile than having our old school faculty meeting. So although we are still set monthly and staying after school for that hour, it's really more beneficial than just disseminating information via a faculty meeting. There certainly is a time and a place for meeting and going over things like building um, fire drill procedures and things like that, but most of the information that is disseminated by our principal is done so via email or a newsletter so that really we can focus more on helping our students. So this is an example of Empower Hour back in December, and as you can see, we have three sessions set up, so they're about 20 minutes long for each session, and it's showing us uh, the presenter and then the session title. Oftentimes we hyperlink different uh, resources right there, the room number, or perhaps it's in our library, and um, teachers are then have choice in where they might like to go. The other important piece is to is to allow teams time to explore. So as you can see, the last little block is team time, and that's really to discuss some of those other district initiatives, which then we're trying to help sustain through our building in power hours, and then allow um, allow everyone to time to collaborate with their team as well. 
So what might it look like from a district level? And again, I think our goal is to empower teachers to share. Because although I do love presenting professional development, I also can appreciate that I'm not the only one who has, you know, some fun things and exciting things to share. So it's in October, we were given the opportunity to create a professional development schedule that looks similar to an ed camp. And I took some screenshots, and again, we do have a resource linked for you in the live binder as well. But this is what our district elementary ed camp breakout sessions looked like. Um, session one started in the afternoon. We did have a district professional development together in the morning, and then these are our breakout sessions in the afternoon. And what I love about this is teachers receive this schedule in advance, and they're able to sign up using Sign Up Genius ahead of time for the session, and then they can attend whichever ones they wish. And so there were, there were several sessions, but then what I loved about this professional development day was that 20% time to really use what you've learned, and we called it lab time, to investigate topics further. So I do absolutely love going and receiving professional development, but oftentimes I feel like I don't have enough time to explore myself and really dig deeper into the different topics and really, you know, and I like how everyone's saying that 20% time. Um, if you know anything about Genius Hour, which is probably a whole other professional development day, but that 20% time to uh, really creatively explore and dive deeper is really important. So our next model is what I call um, Brex Fast. And again, I'm playing on words because this August we rolled out Fast, which is uh, our formative assessment screening tool. It's very similar to a tool, a diagnostic tool like AIMSWeb or Divil, and we use it to for our universal screener in September with our students, in January, and again in May. We also use this tool for progress monitoring and to really track students in our Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions, as well as to monitor our special education students as well. SAS was brand new to us this year, and the district rolled it out in August. But again, going back to that 20% time, we really didn't have time to digest, to dive into it, and we really need to be able to sustain this professional development. And therefore, we needed to build in some additional time to do this. Certainly, in our building, we used our September and October Empower Hours to help sustain the new learning and allowed teachers to choose attending sessions that um, Mrs. Desideri and I ran together. And then on top of that, we felt as if we needed even more. So the way our day looks is the teachers come in at 8.15 and the first bell where students arrive is actually 8.45. So we have 30 minutes in the beginning of each day, and we try to schedule, um, again, with food, <laughs> some opportunities for to sustain this professional development. We held two breakfasts, one in October and one in November. And before we did so, we surveyed teachers. So as you can see, there's a pattern to this where we want to drill down and find out specifically what do teachers want, what do they need, and we use the survey to guide our next steps. So here's an example. Again, these are screenshots of the Google form that we sent out. However, the link, an example of the link is actually in the live binder for you. 
So again, asking for their name, any questions that they have, and anything they'd like to explore further and fast. And although I did have one teacher uh, put in what he wanted for breakfast, <laughs> which was helpful as well. We did make the French toast. But we also included the fact that teachers really wanted um, reports that they could share with parents at parent-teacher conferences in November. So that really helped us guide, okay, what, what are our next steps? So we created an agenda, and we started off with a five to ten minute group instruction based on what they, what the survey results were. And then um, we tried to allow time, like I was saying we had 30 minutes, so we tried to allow time for us to individually go around and meet one-on-one -on -one or in small groups so that then, you know, we could meet teachers where they were in that moment. And certainly coaching opportunities followed after these events because teachers were then booking me to go over reports and to help them to run reports that were specific to their, their classroom and their students. Here's an example of our agenda. And then the last model we will talk about today is uh, parent professional development. So as a teacher, you may do this already. And here's just another spin on professional development for parents, a differentiated make and take. Our building is a Title I school, so we offer four Title I parent workshops throughout the year. We try to do one each quarter. And we decided that first we would send out an RSVP, and once we knew the child's name, we used the FAST data to drill down to a specific area of need, a specific reading area of need. And then we created folders based on that reading skill for each child. So, you know, if Johnny Smith needed phonics, we created a folder for John, it said Johnny Smith, so that when Mrs. Smith came, she picked up the folder and there were a variety of different phonics games and activities that she could then make and take. So this is an example of the PowerPoint, again, this will be in the live binder as well. So we had the parents come in, sign in, find their child's folder. We did actually you're going to say, like, oh, geez, who put all of this together? We actually had the help of our administrative assistants. We have fabulous administrative assistants at my school, and they helped us copy and put together the folders. So. What we did, like I said, is drill down, use the FastBridge tool to determine the area of need. And then how many of you, I hope you're familiar with the Florida Center for Reading Research, because all of the activities came from there. And we may have used these as teachers in our classroom, but this was an opportunity to share some of these resources with parents. So these links are also within the Live Binder and um, I made folders for each grade level span as well um, so that you can certainly use this when turnkeying professional development yourself for parents if you wish. So I made originals and then the administrative assistants actually put together the folders so I would email them and say Johnny Smith needs phonics and they would copy all of the phonics materials and put it together in the folder for Johnny Smith, which was great. Here is a picture of all the parents working to create these games for their children. And those that's the end of our session today, but I want you to think about how might you incorporate 
your professional development experiences into these models? You know, is there anything here that you feel like, oh, that's a great question, what's the parent turnout? Actually, this was our best parent turnout that we've ever had by creating this make and take. So I think actually having parents create something that they can implement just as we like that as well as teachers. Um, parents appreciated having strategies that they could go, go home and use right away. But I do want to thank you all, all the participants, for turning, tuning in today. And I want to thank everyone at Classroom 2.0 Live for this opportunity. And a special thank you to Peg George for all of your help and support this week. I really do appreciate that. But certainly I know we have Q&A. Are there any other questions that I can answer at this time? The couple of questions that I managed to catch from the chat have already been answered. Does anyone have any other questions for Janine? You can type in the chat and then we can deal with them now. Well, I'm only a tweet away if anyone ever wants which work, to. Which works best, before, after, or lunch for your PD? Um, I would say morning is always the best. Mm -hmm. First thing in the morning. I mean, always to have food mm -hmm. <laughs> along with it. But everyone is uh, very awake and ready to learn first thing in the morning. So. Right. So it's really going to be dependent on uh, your school and what works for you. Miss you too, Mary Lou. She's my great partner, Grass. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, thanks to all my East Penn colleagues for tuning in and joining us today. Really appreciate that. And for everyone for participating. Yes, any final questions for Denise? Oh, thank you. Such nice comments in the chat. Thank you so much. We did get very good parent turnout. We have about 23 parents. So that was a new record for us this past year. So that was fabulous. Oh, it, if running an after-school PD is there a special place where the teacher's children can go? This teacher has so many teachers, the school has so many teachers with little ones either at their school or the Catholic school next door that are present during their meetings. Oh, that's a good question. So when we run our parent uh, PD, mm -hmm. we actually do have one, we have an aide who watches the children. So we provide free babysitting, mm -hmm. which is also a plus. And we're able to pay that person through Title I funds. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be very helpful as well. Yeah, that's probably also and an incentive. Have, right, it's an incentive. And we give away a Barnes & Noble gift card as well. Mm -hmm. so we're all about the <laughs> motivation in any way we can. Right. Motiv Wants to come in and well, that's an idea, Peg. Service hours for high school students. Yes, yeah, that's a great idea. Well, those were the questions that I was able to to capture and that people wrote in here at the end. Great. Well, thanks again, everyone. Hope you have a fabulous Saturday and. Please connect with me on Twitter at Deneen Spin. Yes, thank, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we, I was going to start the wrap up, but we don't have the ending slides. Yeah, I also went forward. I didn't see one after that. I guess we could go from the planning doc, Peggy without the slides. Do you want to tell us what's coming up next, Peggy? Sure, I could do that. That's a great idea. I don't know why those slides didn't load, but let me just 
quickly go to that slide. We have some great shows coming up. And next Saturday, February 10th, Shelley Terrell is going to do a fantastic webinar that's all about teaching with fairy tales. And she gives some sort of historical perspective to it and some lots of great practical examples and tools. The following week, we're going to have a whole session devoted just to book creator in the classroom with John Smith. And he's going to especially focus on things you can do with Chromebook. So that'll be a real bonus. On March 3rd, Heather Moser is going to do Enhancing Relationships Through Modern Technology Tools. And March 10th, Jolie Boucher, Boucher, I think you say her name, on differentiating instructions with hyperdocs in the elementary classroom. We've had a couple of sessions on hyperdocs, and you can do so many things with them. And so it's going to be great to hear her perspective on that, because she's an uh, avid hyperdocs creator and user. And then on March 24th, Paula Fellinger, who was in the room with us, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Paula, um, she's going to be our featured teacher um, on March 24th, and she teaches second grade. So even though you can't see the slides, um, I hope you'll all come back and join us any Saturday you can. And be sure to um, fill out the survey um, when you leave the webinar today. It should pop right up. But if it doesn't, I'll put the link in the chat. And that survey will get you a PD certificate. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'll go by the planning doc as well. Um, the Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it's free. The recordings are on iTunes U. Uh, from the live binder, you can nominate a featured teacher, like Paula will be in a few weeks here. And as you exit the session, that survey link should open. Um, if it doesn't, you can take the link from the chat. Uh, if you do request a PD certificate, please use a personal email address, because schools tend to block them from getting to you. And again, we want to thank Steve Hargadon, the, the founder of Classroom 2.0. Uh, for, and thank Blackboard Collaborate for our session. We want to thank Deneen for presenting today and to thank everyone for coming today.